When building applications, most developers default to using one of the big cloud providers like AWS or Azure. Though powerful, learning what it takes to develop and deploy your application on these platforms can be frustrating and time consuming. These days, smaller companies are offering solutions that make development faster and allow deployments to be as easy as a click of a button. This video is going to focus on a tool called Lolo. Lolo lets you visually build and deploy cloud agnostic serverless applications while being simple and intuitive to use. I'll show you how easy it is to use Lolo to build and deploy a Twitter processing app that listens to live tweets and tallies the most common terms. So let me show you what we're building. We'll build this project in four main parts. First, we'll focus on setting up our Twitter handler. This component will hook into the Twitter stream API and listen for incoming tweets. To make things a bit more interesting, we'll be filtering our stream for tweets that are related to the recent World Cup. In our second step, we'll buffer our tweets for up to five seconds before sending the aggregated results to our next function. Our third step is to write some code that calculates the word frequency of all words within each tweet and within each batch. Finally, in our fourth step, we'll send the frequency totals into our last function that will write the results to DynamoDB. So that's the goal, let's get started. On the Lolo homepage, we'll head over into the console section of the app. Click the Create button to make a new project and give it a descriptive name. We'll click Next to create the app. This is the Canvas section of your Lolo application. It's where you'll be spending the majority of your time creating your functions or using many of the existing ones that Lolo offers. Before we can create our project's components, we need to set some environment variables, two for AWS and one for Twitter. To do that, we'll head over into the Setting section. The left-hand menu contains a number of important configuration categories. An important one is the module section that lets you import additional dependencies that you need for your project. Since Lolo already comes built in with many common dependencies, including the AWS SDK, we don't need to make any changes for our application. To continue creating our environment variables, we'll click on Variables. We need to create three environment variables for this project. The first is our AWS access key ID. The second being our AWS secret access key. And the last one being our Twitter auth token that you can find on the Twitter developer website. Here are the three environment variables that we've created. At this point, we're ready to head back over into the canvas section and start creating our functions. My preferred method to build is to define each component before implementing the code. We'll begin by creating our Twitter handler function that will be responsible for listening to incoming tweets. We'll click on new function in the bottom right and position our element where we want it on the canvas. We'll double click on it to access the configuration for this function. This is where we'll eventually be writing our code. For now, we'll click on settings in the top tab and give our function a reasonable name. We're now ready to go back and create our batching component. We'll be using a pre-existing function that Lolo provides that automatically batches and delivers events based on time or event count. We access this component by clicking on the plus icon on the top left of our canvas and typing in buffer to filter down the results. We'll click on the result entry to add the buffer function to our canvas. This function requires us to double click on it to specify its configuration. Here, we set the maximum buffer size to 50 and the timeout to 5,000 milliseconds or 5 seconds. This configuration means that our function will deliver a batch of events when it receives up to 50 of them or 5 seconds elapse. We'll also head over to the Options tab on the left-hand side and give our function a reasonable name. I'm going to quickly add two more basic functions, one for word frequency and one to increment the results in DynamoDB. You can start to see our application looking somewhat similar to our end goal. We now need to define the connections between our components. This application uses a simple method where the output of one function is the input of the next. We simply drag and drop the output ports of each function to the input port of the next one. 
We also need to modify our Twitter handler function to remove the input port. This is because this function will use an event producing feature that is only available when there are no inbound ports. To remove the port, we navigate to its settings, go to the port section, and click on the delete icon to remove it. This is looking great. We're now ready to implement the code for each function. Let's start with a Twitter handler. Lolo provides two out-of-the-box functions that are run at different times. The first one is called setup and is run when the application starts. This is great for initializing certain elements in your program. You can see that this function takes as an input the CTX or context parameter. This parameter provides us with useful utility methods like logging, routing, and many others. The second method called handler is run whenever your function is triggered by an event. You can see this function takes an additional EV or event parameter. This object will contain details of the event that was passed into it upon invocation. For our use case, we'll be implementing most of our code in the setup function. This will make it so that when our application boots up, it will automatically start hooking into the Twitter stream API. Now that you have some context, no pun intended, we're ready to write our code. We import the request library that we'll be using to make calls to Twitter. We add a constant that points to the Twitter streaming endpoint. I've already gone ahead and configured it with a rule so that it only captures tweets that reference the World Cup. We extract the produce event and log functions from the context variable. The produce event function will allow us to emit events through our outbound port and load them into our bash component. The log function allows us to log what our application is doing so we can debug it later in the monitoring section. We extract the Twitter auth token from our environment variable and create a request object that will pass into the Twitter endpoint. We populate it with our URL, our token, and a timeout. We make a get request to open the data stream. We create a handler that will be invoked anytime Twitter sends us a new tweet. We parse the JSON string and then call the produce event function with the tweet's text. Finally, we modify the handler section to add a call to the route function with the event payload. Now, whenever our application starts, it will hook into the Twitter stream and start sending messages to our batch component. Next, we need to implement our word frequency function that will be responsible for tallying up the frequency of each word in each tweet within each batch. So let's do that now. In this component, we'll be writing our code in our handler function. This code will be run in response to a batch of messages being delivered. First, we extract the tweets from our incoming events object. Next, we initialize our frequency object that will be used to store the number of occurrences of each word. Next, we create a for loop to iterate over all the tweets in the batch. Then we get a reference to each tweet and log the details of it. We can now split the tweet into a list of words. We iterate over all the words, skip the ones that have short lengths, and then sanitize the input. If this is our first time seeing the word, we set its value to one. Else, we add one to what's already there. Now, we can send the frequency map to our final component using the route function. This final component will write the results to DynamoDB. Let's implement it now. We first import the AWS SDK, set our region, and create our DynamoDB client. In the handler function, we reference our frequency map based on the incoming event object and iterate over each entry. We extract the value and stub two methods in a try-catch block. This code will work by first trying to insert our record into Dynamo. If that fails, we'll call the updateItem method which will increment the existing value by whatever value is in the event payload. We'll do this for each word. We route the frequency map to our outbound port. Note that this step is optional. Now we can implement our insert and update methods. Let's start with insert. We first log out the incoming data, create a parameters object, and provide it with our configuration. Here, we set our DynamoDB table name, the word we are updating, and its frequency value. We also add a conditional expression to ensure that this operation will only succeed if this word does not yet exist in our table. We then write a quick try catch that uses the put item API. Let's now implement the update item method. This method is very similar to what we did above except that it sets four additional properties that tell DynamoDB to increment the word's frequency if it already exists in the table with the value that we are currently processing. After that, we write another try catch and call the update item API. This code is good to go. We're now ready to run our application and test everything out. So let's try it. We're back in the editor. In the top right of our screen, we'll click the run button. This triggers a new application deployment. 
We can now go to the log section to see what our application is doing. As we can see, logs are being emitted and we're currently writing our results to DynamoDB. Let's go check out our table in the DynamoDB console and see the most popular terms. Here we are in the DynamoDB console. If we scan our table and then sort the results, we can see the most common terms. No surprise here, the great legend himself, Lionel Messi, is right at the top. I hope you can see how quick and easy it is to build a completely serverless application using Lolo. You can try out Lolo today at www.lolo.co.